YouTube, hey there, it's Casey Dimma, TaxSellAcademy.com. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode of the Tax Sell Podcast. As always, if you enjoy podcasts, you can check us out at TaxSellPodcast.com where you can download us on your favorite podcasting platform and you can listen on the go. Let's go ahead, switch on over, and record that audio portion right now. Welcome to the Tax Sell Podcast, where tax sell investing is made easy. My name is Casey Dimon. I'm a tax sell veteran. I am the leading tax sell expert. I'm the author of the Tax Sell Playbook. I'm the founder of the Tax Sell Academy, and I am your host right here on the Tax Sell Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast episode. As a reminder, this is a completely free podcast, and it's brought to you through and because of the Tax Sell Academy, which you can learn more about by going to TaxSellAcademy.com. On this week's episode, we're going to be discussing the most popular rookie mistakes and how you can avoid them. Now listen, I was once a rookie a while ago, and I hear lots and lots of stories from those rookies every single day. And the truth is, everything that I went through and every story that I hear can serve as a learning lesson. So I want to take a few of those lessons and teach you about them on this week's episode. So let's get right to it. One of the issues that many new rookies face is they set their expectations way too high. Now, there's nothing wrong with setting the bar high, with having large goals, and then working towards those goals. I am all about that. And the tax sale business is absolutely a business where you can make lots of money. But I don't know if it comes from the 10 million television shows where people make gobs of money flipping house after house or what. But the truth is that you must align your expectations with the reality of this business. This business is not as easy as you might think it is. There's a significant amount of effort that must go into it. Now, week one as a tax sell investor, you're not going to come in and make a million dollars, although some people seem to think they are. Now, obviously, there are ways that you can make your path to success much, much shorter than, say, mine, for example. You can learn from others. You can find the paths that are less traveled, but your mindset on day number one should be that you are looking to learn while you're doing the work, while you're learning about the business, while you're investing in your first property, all those things should in themselves be learning experiences. While striving to make money, you should be using it equally as a very, very valuable learning opportunity. If you do that from day number one, you're going to have the long-term success that you desire. If you look at this business as a quick money grab where you should be making loads of money tomorrow, I'm sorry, but you're going to be disappointed. The next common mistake goes right along with the first. Lots of rookies are very, very impatient. I know this because I hear about their impatience just about every single day of my life. I'll get DMs and comments from frustrated rookies that tell me they just can't find a decent deal at a tax sale. After I ask a few questions, this usually means they looked at one list in one area and they maybe placed a bid or two and they didn't get to purchase a property. Now, in some rare instances, they've gone to two or even three auctions and they still haven't won a single property. I'll be blunt, there are times to this day after nearly two decades in this business where I will go weeks and weeks without buying a single property. And that's okay. Even though I look at lists and place bids nearly every single day, I don't win anything. But again, it's okay. That doesn't mean this business doesn't work. And it doesn't mean that the people that are buying the properties that you passed on are not making money. Their objectives are likely different than yours. The same thing can be said against everybody that I bid against. Their objectives are likely different than my objectives. And that is okay. You have to realize that this is a real estate we are investing in. One deal has the potential to change your life. You shouldn't expect that, but yes, the potential 
is there. Now, my suggestion here is to go into it, get involved as a tax sale investor, knowing it is going to take time. And get this, you should also know that even after you purchase your first, second, third, 100th property, it still might take some time before you're able to purchase another property. Now, I have purchased 30 properties in one single day. So that's the flip side of things. But this is not a business where you pick and choose what you want at the price you want it at when you want it. There are lots of outside factors here, like other people, for example. Be patient and give it the necessary time. Another rookie mistake is that they won't modify their plans. A lot of people get into this business and their plans include buying that cute little house with a white picket fence, slapping on a coat of paint, and then reselling it for a 300% profit. Well, that doesn't work in this business. So many rookies get tunnel vision on what they want to do instead of what they can do. I have made loads and loads of money investing in the properties that nobody else wanted. These were properties where I was the only person in a room full of lots of bidders that wanted to bid on those properties. Literally the only person that placed a bid. I did it because that is what was available to me. I knew what I was going to do to those properties. I knew how I was going to sell those properties. And I did very well on those properties. Let me give you an example. Most investors, when they first get into real estate, they want to invest in single family homes. That's fantastic. Unless those single family homes are not available in your area or if they're selling for too much money. So what about all that vacant land that you just skipped over? Like those vacant lots, for example. I know they're not exactly a sexy type investment. They're not exciting at all. In fact, they're probably boring. But we're not going for cute picket fences or excitement. We're going for money making properties. Those same vacant lots that you think you're too good for and won't fit into your plans, well, there are folks out there scooping them up all day long, making lots of money on them. Don't get tunnel vision. Don't be so set in your plans as a rookie that you will not modify them on an as-needed basis. And by the way, I'm not just talking about homes and land here. I'm talking about everything from start to finish, from funding to your marketing and selling methods and everything in between. Modify your plans on an as-needed basis. Nothing in this business should ever be concrete. Another common issue amongst the rookies is that they're often too scared to make mistakes. So scared, in fact, that they never get started in this business. And a lot of that might even depend on your personality. There are folks that are very risk tolerant. There are others that are very risk adverse. But some rookies will hear one story and they go with it forever. It is constantly in the back of their head, holding them back. And you know, I might even be guilty in playing a part of this. I've told a number of what some people might consider a horror story about tax sell investing. But much of the stories that I tell are so you know that you should properly prepare yourself and align your expectations with reality. They are not to scare you off from investing. But in the end, you must have the confidence to get involved in this business. And you can gain that confidence through properly educating yourself. If you don't have any training in this business, whether it's through a local mentor or something like the Tax Cell Academy or even some sort of self-training, if you have no training at all, this business probably should scare you away. But if you take the time to learn, to practice, to grow as an investor, you will gain the required confidence. And once you do this, you're gonna be ready to go. Another common rookie mistake their margins are way off. And this is something that can often be caused by a lack of education and perhaps even the wrong mental approach. And I'm also guilty of this sometimes myself. After all, 
What does it matter if we only make a thousand or two thousand dollars on a piece of property? That's a thousand or two more than we used to have, right? Well, what if something goes wrong? That money will quickly disappear and you're going to be in the hole. Now, as a rookie investor, I really want you to pay attention here. As a rookie investor, you will have a significantly higher chance of things going wrong than a veteran would. A veteran probably can and probably should take smaller margins than a rookie tax sell investor. As a rookie, your budget should account for every single what-if scenario that you can think about. Now, naturally, you won't be getting as many properties with that approach, but the truth is you should play it slow and take the time to learn. It all goes back to that patience that we discussed earlier in this episode. The next one is that a lot of rookies simply don't know the laws. Now, I'll admit that these laws are written by attorneys who at some times I feel their entire intent and purpose in life is to confuse the heck out of me. But get this, those laws are the rules to our business. It's like trying to play a sports game like basketball or baseball and not having any idea what the rules are. What I see happening is that rookies will enter an investment off of one or two pieces of knowledge while ignoring all of the laws that apply to that investment. They will take the idea that you can buy a piece of property whose owner failed to pay the taxes. You can take that property, then you can resell it. And they get that stuck in their head, and that's all they care about. They go out, they buy a piece of property, and they try to sell it. What happens here is they ignore the reason that the property is there. They ignore all of the laws that impact them when they buy that property. They ignore everything except for that one piece of information. Buy a tax defaulted piece of real estate, sell a tax defaulted piece of real estate. There's so much more to it than that. And taking that approach where you have one piece of information only, it can put somebody in a very, very bad spot. I hear about issues all the time where people have failed to read the laws. Why? It's foolish. Here's the solution. Find the tax sell laws that apply to the state that you are investing in. Now, if you're in the Tax Sell Academy and you're listening to this podcast, we have every set of tax sell laws available for you in your module. If you're not a member, find those laws somewhere online. Read through those laws and study those laws. Make notes. You can probably do this one evening. Instead of watching TV, just research those laws and read through them taking notes. They are everything in our business. And it is crucial that you know these laws and how they apply to you. Don't take one little piece of information about this business and run with it without knowing the rest of the ingredients that will make you a successful tax sell investor. And the last mistake that I want to discuss today that I see rookies make is they perform only surface level research. And this one is so easy to do for rookies because a lot of them don't know any better. It is so, so costly though. Let's say you're reviewing a tax sale list on the county's website. You see a piece of property that you like on that list. And conveniently, they put a little link right next to it. You click on that link and it pulls up the property assessor's website. It pulls up the card, the information card for that specific piece of property. It tells you, 1,800 square foot house built in 1985, three bedrooms, two bath, tax assessed value, $120,000. It might even have an old photo of that property in some counties. You think, wow, the opening bid is only $15,000. That's a bargain. I'm going to make loads of money. You place the bid, you win the property, and then you discover, oh yeah, that house, it burned down a month ago, or that property has been demolished, or it has a quarter million dollar lien against it from the government that's not going away and is now your responsibility, or that the link on the tax sale list was for the wrong property. They made a mistake when they inputted it, and you actually bought a landlocked quarter acre swamp lot. That's not worth a dime. Or maybe that property is scheduled to be demolished in a month and you're gonna be the person paying for that bill. 
There are so many different scenarios that can cost you in massive, massive ways when you only perform surface level research. The issue is most rookies don't even realize they're performing surface level research. Sure, the prop assess report, it is absolutely one of those pieces to the puzzle. It can definitely be helpful, but there are plenty of other tools you must review as well. And that's just one mistake. I hear rookies all the time talk about the Zillow value for the house that they're buying. Newsflash, Zillow values are incredibly, ridiculously inaccurate valuation methods for tax defaulted homes or any foreclosures for that matter. My suggestion is to take the time to learn how to research properties properly. Take the time to learn how to use all the resources at your disposal so you can make an educated decision, including the fact that you need to learn how to value properties that you're interested in purchasing. Learn how to go deeper than just surface level stuff. Learn to research correctly. I was saying that your research equals your results. If your research is lousy, your results are going to be lousy too. Always remember that. The tax sale business is a phenomenal business. In fact, in my opinion, of course, it's one of the greatest businesses in the world to get into if you want to grow long-term, sustainable wealth. But at the end of the day, you can't just hop in and see success without putting forth the effort required to make it worth. All the mistakes that we discussed today are avoidable using the suggestions that I provided. And there are a lot of other mistakes that rookies make on a daily basis. But by you taking the time to listen to this podcast, to learn from my trainings, and learn from my mistakes, you have a huge leg up on most other rookies right out of the gate. Continue to develop your knowledge of this business. Continue to develop your skill set, and you will see the success that you desire in due time. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. If you've received any value at all from this episode or any of our episodes here on the Tax Cell Podcast, please do us a huge favor and leave some positive feedback on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us on right now. And as always, if we can provide any help on your quest for tax cell success, there are a whole bunch of links in today's show notes, including one to our primary site at taxcellacademy.com. We'll see you next time right here on the Tax Cell Podcast. Take care, folks, and make it a successful day. See ya.